Baby, come on, waist trainer. Don't don't fail me today. I can't breathe. I am really trying to unbig this back and unbig this gut for the relaunch of this boutique. But baby, it's treacherous. I be hungry. Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl Carissa and I am back with another video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching my channel. Thank you guys so much for liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, and all of that good stuff. Without further ado, okay, excuse me, where are my manners? I didn't even introduce myself to the people that may be new here. If you are new here, my name is Carissa and I am a business coach and consultant. I teach entrepreneurs how to have four-figure launches in consistent four-figure days. I am a former six-figure boutique owner and I am re-entering the boutique space. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to be showing you guys my journey to relaunching my boutique and offering tips and tricks along the way to ensure that you guys have four-figure launches in consistent four-figure days as well. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead on and get into the tea, okay? Now, here's what I wanna to talk to you guys about today. I wanna to talk to you guys all about vendors, right? Now, I had a client, and so many of my clients have the same thing. They feel as if, if they can just get the vendors, if they know who Rashida's vendor is, if they know who Lily's Closet vendor is, and can I get Ms. Bling Miami's vendor, if they know the vendor, they feel like that they can make the type of money that those people are making. Now, vendors are important, but the most important thing is to understand marketing, sales, analytics. Like You need to understand the business side of things. But for the sake of this video, and since we're only talking about vendors, I want to come and let you guys know really what's tea when it comes to these vendors, right? So, so many people feel like that since they are a smaller boutique or they don't, they're not buying as much inventory as some of the bigger boutiques is that they can't build relationships with their vendors, right? I just had an idea. Baby, I just got real excited because what I'm going to do for you guys, I'm going to stop this video. Okay, let me go ahead on and finish the video, but I'm going to release a boutique starter kit because at the end of the day, I think that people miss a lot of steps when it comes to starting a boutique. And that is why a lot of boutiques don't make it. That's why a lot of people get discouraged when it comes to making the money because they feel like, oh, I have the vendors, I'm posting all the time, I'm sending out the emails and it's still not working, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually gonna to come up with a boutique starter kit for you guys because I'm going to include vendors. I, I just thought about like I'm going to include the vendor. I'm going to include how to build relationships with vendors because the reason why it's important to build relationships with your vendors, you ever like see one of the popular girls post something, right? And they post some product and you're trying to find it. I've seen so many of my clients and so many other boutique girls sending stuff like, hey, where did this person get this, this merchandise from? I have seen it in so many boutique um, group chats, so many boutique groups on Facebook. What they would do is they would screenshot somebody's post and say, hey, anybody know the vendor behind this, right? And a lot of times when they, when, by the time that product is released, the vendor who originally had it it's completely out of it. So now you have to go to somewhere like Giddy Wholesale, SJ Styles, somewhere like that, and you gotta pay almost double for the product, right? Let's just get into, that. that we, the video about tech turn. Let's just get into what really happens with that, right? So understanding how to build relationships with vendors, you can, uh, you can get first dibs on this product no matter how much money you are spending. When I first started my boutique, I had relationships with my vendors from the very beginning. I knew how to negotiate. I knew how to sell myself. I knew, I knew how to sell myself. That's one of the things I know how to negotiate. That's the biggest thing. And I knew how to get what I wanted from the vendor, but also how it's beneficial to them as well. And so a lot of times what people don't even really realize is the fact that let's just say, so right now we're coming up on fall, what fall, winter inventory, right? So it's July. That fall and winter inventory, a lot of the bigger boutiques already got their merchandise on pre-order. If they don't have it on pre-order, they already got it in a warehouse. They already got it at their locations, right? And the inventory that they have, they may not even release that inventory until Black Friday. So here it is, Black Friday comes around and everybody's sending it in a group chat or send it in the Facebook group like, hey, do anybody know the vendor behind this product or whatever? Not knowing the girl already had the product from July. So now you have to get it from Giddy Wholesale versus getting it from the place that Giddy got it from. And so now that I just had this revelation, I'm gonna create this boutique starter kit. 
I am going to start inserting clips somewhere in here. So I'm going to just speak as if the book is already created. Let me see. I just wrote down a bunch of notes of what I'm going to include in there. I'm going to include pricing, how to price, how to price your merchandise, profit margins, vendors, relationship building, AI tools, um, Shopify apps to add to your store. Like it's about to be lit. Like I was saying. So for example, Giddy Wholesale had this product right here. This is a product that I saw on Giddy from one of my clients. Now, this price looks a little bit better for your profit margins, right? And who want to pay Giddy's price when you can get it way cheaper? So that's really what I wanted to like let you guys know that once you are seeing some of these boutiques release product, they've already had the product for a while. And then the other problem with that will become is that now you're buying product for more right because typically the bigger boutique girls they do get a, a cheaper price on the product because their uh moqs is higher but don't worry about it i'm gonna show y'all how to get a cheaper price on y'all product too in this boutique starter kit because baby i have negotiated 25 cents off per piece i have negotiated 50 cents off per piece and since i'm able to do that guess what the price that i'm paying for the merchandise goes down so it helps my profit margins for me to get the the you know the profit that i want to see for my business so and i know that this video probably seemed like it's all over the place now but i'm gonna try to keep it where we at you know with the vendors but the problem with this is too guess what since the bigger girl got the price the cheaper price for it right the bigger the larger boutique girl i should say or more popular she got it for a different price now you feel as if you have to be in alignment with her pricing because uh, that's the price of the market you see about five or six girls got the item all priced at 68 dollars. now you feel like you have to have the product priced at 68 dollars as well not even knowing that you're cheating yourself because guess what while they may have gotten the product for 18 dollars, you got that product for 28 dollars. so they're gonna see more you're gonna see more profit than you're going to see right so another thing too i wanted to just really uh mention even when you're pricing your products you want to make sure that you're seeing the profit that you want to see but you also want to make sure that you have the expenses all of your expenses built into this price i you know how many times i've seen girls um pricing something for forty dollars when i know the product cost them twenty dollars and they can't tell me no even 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 if they didn't get it from the manufacturer or the original vendor, it, if they went and bought it from a place like a Giddy Wholesale and you charge them $40 and you pay $20 or $25 for it, your pricing is jacked up already as it is. So with that being said, I want everybody to make sure that they're pricing their products correctly, but also making sure that you're getting it from the right vendor. And another thing too, as it relates to vendors, is the fact that a lot of times these vendors lists that people purchase, I've seen them. Like I said, my clients have shown me the vendors list and I'm just like, yo, you bought this from her. I know for a fact that's not the vendor that she's using. You get what I'm saying? I know she's not using that vendor. That's a trash vendor unless, you know, she has trash product, but I can go through her site right now and let you know these five vendors are not being used because I can tell you where the product came from. And that's another thing. Once you get so good, at knowing your vendors and building the relationships with your vendors and knowing your products you're just gonna know by the type of item that it is exactly what vendor it came from period but that just comes with time and i don't want nobody to feel rushed and i know that i just started this whole video and just start ranting about vendors when you guys are purchasing these vendors lists, I just want you to make sure that you're purchasing a vendors list that has actually been vetted. You know what I'm saying? Like being tested. All the vendors that's going to be in my boutique starter kit, baby, I have used every last one of them. I'm not going to gatekeep. I'm not going to give you somebody who I know is trash or I'm not going to give you some vendor who I know is buying from the original vendor. I've seen that happen a lot of times too. And that's just jacked up, at, you know, in itself. But anyway... <laughs> Anyway, so like when you're looking on places like Fashion Go and LA Showroom, try to look around for that same type of product, especially Fashion Go. Fashion Go has like the style match. I don't really, like I said before, I don't really use Fashion Go or LA Showroom like that anymore just because I have my vendors that I use. I have their websites. I have their contact information. Let's go back. Let's reel it on back. Let's let me tell y'all another thing too about when it comes to other people having um getting the product before you can even see it. A lot of times 
here's one of the number one things. A lot of times these wholesalers and these vendors, they have the product on their website before they even put it on Fashion Go or LA Showroom or something like that. So that's one thing. That's one way for you to get your product sooner because you go straight to your wholesaler's website, right? Another thing that happens is the fact that these girls have relationships with the vendor. So a lot of times the vendor would just reach out to them and let them know, hey, this is what we have coming in or this is what we have uh, going on before we post it on the website. We think that you may like this. That happens all the time. And so that's why when you see another boutique owner with this product on their site and you know, like, well, you kind of know the vendor. You're like, well, wait a minute. I've never had the chance to see this. Like, or this today, it just went up on the vendor's site. How does she have it on her website already? A lot of times, like I say, they're contacting them, letting them know what's going on, giving them first dibs. And then sometimes they give them a sample piece. And a lot of times the girls are passing that same sample piece around. So the product isn't even done being manufactured yet. The product isn't even available yet. They just have the sample, which is like why some people do pre-order. So when you see something like pre-order and, you know, uh, estimated ship date, they just got the sample. They don't even have the product yet. But don't worry about it. I'm going to show you guys how to get in, get in tune regardless of how much money you're spending with these vendors. And then you will have like some of the boutiques, they will buy up everything. They'll buy it all up, you know what I mean? And so now we got to wait for the second wave for the stuff to come out because they have the means to do so. Or let's just say, you know, uh, the, the vendor gives the um, other boutiques first dibs on things. Now they done bought up everything. So guess what? Now we still have to wait for the second wave. And by the time the second wave comes, it's something new in. And it's just like, you know, it's just like a never ending cycle. So I'm going to teach you guys how to really get in tune with your vendors, build these relationships with your vendors so that you can get the items that you want to get. Let me put you up on game. While some people are looking around for certain vendors like, oh, this girl got this and my customers want it. Guess what? That product was from two years ago. I remember one time, y'all remember when everybody was wearing like the bubble sleeve cardigan and hopefully if I have a picture, I'm gonna insert it somewhere here. Remember when everybody was wearing like the bubble sleeve cardigan? <clears throat> it was like we all just dropped our cardigans all at the same time. People don't even understand them cardigans have been on that wholesaler site for two years before we start buying it up. But I didn't buy it because that's what was trending. I bought it because I thought it was amazing and I thought it would be an amazing addition to my store because you gotta think, I only sold cardigans, dusters, jackets, blazers, stuff like that. And now this product from two years ago is booming. The wholesaler is completely out of, the vendor is just getting, you know, they, they completely out of it because guess what? The other wholesalers who are buying it, like Giddy, they done bought up, bought up so many of them as well, put them on their site. So now the place that we purchased those cardigans from, they're completely out of it. So now they have like an estimated um, new arrival date. So they'll say like, oh, you know, this product should be in, in, you know, like basically the next 45 to 60 days. So you feeling like you have to wait or you're just going to buy it from Giddy. That's, you just got to understand like, how to make your boutique your own. And I always tell my, my clients to have a vision for your boutique. Don't just adapt somebody else's vision for your boutique because that's why it's not working for you the way that it's working for old girl because you're trying to adapt somebody else's vision without having your own vision. For me, I'm in my own lane. I sell outerwear. I want to be one of the biggest outerwear companies in the world, Craig. Like, I don't care to have all of these dresses and party wear and all of this stuff because I have my own vision. And that's the thing. A boutique is supposed to be a, spe a company that offers specialized products. So I really didn't expect this video to go this way, but I just wanted to put y'all up on game as it relates to like vendors and stuff like that. Just because I'm, like I say, I'm back in the process of starting my boutique all over again. And then I have clients too that are coming to me because they see that I'm back and they're like, hey, can you help me or whatever? So it's just really all about like using your better judgment, but also knowing mentally that regardless of how much money that you're spending with these vendors, your money is valuable too, because all it would take is for one person that has influence to say, hey, don't shop with them. 
because of something they did with them. And then that vendor is out of business. No, your, your money is valuable just as well as everybody else's. You deserve to build relationships just as well as everyone else does. And you deserve to get first. Deal. So at the end of the day, you play small, you stay small. You think big, you play big. So at the end of the day, just know you're, you're valuable as well. And don't be afraid to reach out to these vendors and begin to build the relationships. So... Anyway, I'm going to go ahead on and get started on this ebook for y'all. And I hope that this video helps somebody. The ebook about to be amazing. I'm going to tell you that right now. So if you're interested in starting your own boutique and you want to know where to start and how to build relationships with your vendors, how to price your products properly, how to make sure that you're seeing the profit, baby, I'm about to include everything. AI, everything. Wait, let me just say this about AI real quick. Don't let AI take away the humanness, if that's even a word from your business because at the end of the day AI don't have the character that you have and that's why a lot of times I mean I love AI AI is amazing but I don't want it to take away the care take away my character and my personality away from my business I don't want my business looking like a robot I want to still be able to connect with my audience I want to still be able to speak their language because I don't know no AI that's gonna be like hey sis Come on now. So with that being said, make sure that you guys are doing exactly what you said you was going to do. Have your own vision and be on the lookout for this ebook. Bye. <laughs>